To begin, I want to start off with me in middle school, eighth grade to be exact. As I walk into advisory classroom, the teacher approaches me and hands me a piece of paper and a pen. She tells me that I'm going to write a letter to myself. She says, you're going to write a letter to yourself. I want you to write about what you expect yourself to be in four years. I'm going to send you the letter at the end of high school graduation. As I write, a new sense of hope begins to fill the page. I set my bar high. My goals include getting into college, becoming valedictorian, meeting the love of my life, becoming an international supermodel, and most importantly, becoming so famous that I could potentially meet and marry Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> I thought it was capable of becoming anything I want to become. You see, no one had ever told me I couldn't. In this middle school, mostly made up of high-income and white students, we had an endless amount of resources. Textbooks, teachers, technology, you name it, we had it. Here, I felt like I could conquer the world. Flash forward, two months. I'm 14 years old sitting in on my very first high school assembly. The principal has just been introduced to give a motivational speech. He starts by asking three questions. He asks, how many of you have family members who have been in jail? Almost every student raises their hand. How many of you know someone who has died due to gun violence? Almost every student raises their hand. How many of you have family members who went to college? Very few students raise their hand. He ends his motivational speech by saying, a third of you will not be here for graduation. Some of you will drop out go to jail, or die. Do not be one of those kids. In a moment, all of the feelings I had in middle school began to feel distant. Would I be able to graduate? Was there a chance one of my peers would drop out? Were one of my classmates going to end up dead? This feeling of hopelessness would not end on the very first day of school. You see, in this high school, mostly made up of minority and low-income students, we often go classes without textbooks, are expected to teach ourselves, and yes, we experience the loss of a classmate due to gun violence. I felt in a moment these feelings of hopelessness. I was stunned, confused, angry. I wasn't sure with what my life had ahead of me. In that short transition from middle school to high school, I not only began to see the inequality in resources, but I also began to see the inequity in belief that educators had in students. The experience of a high school principal telling a group of students that a third of them would not graduate became, became typical. One math school teacher was notorious for creating such a bad climate that students no longer wanted to learn math. I asked, the, I asked the teacher if she could clarify a couple of questions. She looked at me. She said, looks like your parents wasted resources on your education for nothing. In a moment, I didn't know if I could become anything. If my very own teacher didn't believe I was capable of succeeding, then how could I? If it wasn't for my parents' belief in me, as well as the belief of other educators and mentors, I would not be here where I am today. I would not be a freshman at Yale University. I began to look beyond myself. I want to see if other peers had experienced the same things as I did. So I asked. I asked one of my classmates why he didn't try harder in school. He looked at me. He said he didn't try because no one had ever told him he could. He didn't believe in himself. I had a light bulb moment. I saw the connection between how much students believed in themselves and how well they succeeded. This experience encouraged me to be the first student on the New Haven Board of Education, as well as a student on the Connecticut State Board of Education. On my time on the Connecticut State Board of Education, I began to see a trend in underperforming schools that were able to turn around their data. Uh, just in Connecticut, some schools are given extra resources if they are willing to meet certain requirements. Despite these extra resources, only some low-performing schools are able to actually improve their data. One school in particular stood out, Lincoln Bassett School in New Haven. I wondered how the school was able to turn around its data so quickly, so I asked. I asked the principal how she was able to meet growth targets for 94% of her students in just two years. She looked at me and smiled. 
She said that she fo focused on creating a school culture in which higher the expectations for both students and educators. She said she used the power of words to do this. She used the acronym SOAR, feeling safe, staying on task, being held accountable, and being respectful to show educators and students that they could succeed and that they were being held accountable. She championed professional development on class and race issues so that educators could learn how to best empower students. And lastly, she ended each, each morning with the same phrase, Lincoln Bassett, a school where eagles soar and failure is not an option. You see, with words, she took away failure as an option. If there was one thing I learned in my educational experience, it was that educators and community members have to believe in student potential in order for them to succeed. And with this, I call to all educators, Please be wise about the words you use. You have the power to dramatically impact a person's life. Use that power with intention. I call upon policy members to fund public education and to fund it equally, and to create um, cultural competency courses for teacher certification. I call upon students. Please encourage each other and use words positively in the classroom. Together, you can succeed. And lastly, I call upon anyone listening. Please do not make assumptions about someone based, uh, based off of their background. The power of your words can dramatically shape their life. If we do not solve this problem, the impact will be an increased disparity that will hurt American education as a whole. Because the power of words is the power to change lives. Thank you.